All right, what's going on? Welcome back to the Ovens Garage. I'm Tyler, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install this Webasto into my first gen Cummins. I picked up this Webasto from International Parts in uh, Vancouver, and I'm gonna be installing this Webasto onto Old Blue, which is my 1993 Dodge W250, and it has a 12 valve Cummins in it. The primary reason that I'm installing a Webasto into Old Blue is I had originally bought that truck because I had planned on making it my winter beater because I was expecting to move last year um, to a colder climate in Canada, but I, I ended up staying out here in Victoria for another year longer. Um, this upcoming summer though, I'm planning or I'm expecting to be moving back to um, a colder climate of Canada. Sometimes in the winter, it gets down to like minus 30 in the winter time there. And there's pretty, uh, pretty average sustained temperatures around like minus 10, minus 15 in the winter time. I may or may not have a garage uh, when I move out there and I want to have the truck, uh, no matter if I'm at work, coming home or before I'm going to work, I want the truck to be able to start no problem. And I want it to be really a winterized kind of machine that's super reliable. So one of the best things that you can do is to install Webasto because you don't need um, AC power to plug in a block heater or a battery blanket or battery maintainer or anything like that. Uh, this will run off uh, 12 volt battery power and then it sips diesel fuel and it's basically just a small little burner furnace and it, uh, it has an onboard coolant pump and it'll cycle the coolant through the engine. And not only will it cycle the coolant through the engine, depending on how you plumb it, um, it'll cycle coolant through the uh, heater core. So that way when you go into the truck, you turn on your truck and it, you will, you'll immediately have hot air blowing up on, onto your windshield, which will heat up the cab, heat up the windshield uh, for defrosting easily. And then uh, your engine will start uh, pretty easily because all the coolant will be cycled through the block. So this is a bit of a big install. Um, it requires a few different things. Uh, in, in the kit, I have a control unit that I have to mount in the cab. Um, I have the Webasto itself, which I have to mount under in the engine bay somewhere. Um, I have to run a fuel line back to the fuel tank, which in this case, I'm thinking I'm going to have to drop the fuel tank in order to plumb it properly. And then you have to route the intake and exhaust uh, tubes from there. And then the wiring harnesses um, back to each component because there's a fuel pump back by the fuel tank that pumps up the fuel to the Webasto. And then uh, the wiring harness also has to go into the cab for the control unit. So it's a bit of a big install. There's uh, quite a few components to it. Um, but First things first is I'm going to decide a location to install this under the hood in the engine bay and then we'll sort of just make progress from there. And I've tried to make it work so that I could have the Webasto uh, somewhere on the passenger side because that's where the uh, heater lines run and I wanted to keep I wanted to keep my windshield washer reservoir on that side but it ended up being a little too much so um, what my plan is here is I want to relocate the uh, windshield washer reservoir from the passenger side fender to the driver side fender and then I'll mount the Webasto in the place of where the windshield washer reservoir was and then that way it's close to the uh, heater core lines which is exactly where I'm going to plumb into. I had to cut the tab, the factory tab off of this side to make it work. All right, so I'm just on the driver's side of the truck here. I'm gonna take this 90 and then I'm gonna swap it with, there's a T right over here. I'm gonna swap the 90 and the T and then route that hose that went to the passenger side and just run it down the driver's side. All right, so it turned out that um, once I put the tank on and filled it up, I actually had a tiny little hole from what the old tab that I cut off on the uh, windshield washer reservoir. So I actually got this idea from uh, Tim over at Decent Garage to use a plastic welder. So I just went and pick, picked up myself, uh, this is a butane powered, it's kind of like a soldering iron, plastic welder. And I'm using a polyethylene rod and I just patched up the corner there. It was just a tiny little pinhole. And uh, since I got the plastic welder, I figured I might as well use uh, the tab that I cut off, reposition it so it can mount properly onto the inner fender. That way I have three screws in it and it's a little bit more stable. All 
All right, that turned out surprisingly well, and it was surprisingly easy to do. So we'll see how that holds up once I bolt it on and whether or not it just snaps off, but I would say that's better than nothing and definitely worth giving plastic welding a try if you've never done so. Okay, I just want to show you before I mount it here, I've drilled four holes in the inner fender. And on the Webasto, I've got two uh, one inch bolts here, and then uh, two inch and a half bolts. And I've made my own little spacers out of these plastic spacers. And I cut a little bit of an angle on it because uh, the inner fender has an angle. And then I cut out some rubber to have rubber isolators on each bolt. Uh, just to reduce the vibrations on the unit itself. Okay, so before I install it on the inner fender, I just ran some uh, three quarter inch inside diameter hose uh, because I won't be able to access it from this side once it's installed and two stainless hose clamps. And the kit comes with these adapters to go from three quarter inch inside diameter to five eighths inside diameter, which is what's on the truck. <music> So before making the connections to the Webasto with the heater lines, um, what I did was I back flushed the heater core a couple times um, just to make sure that it was cleaned out. So I took these two lines out. This one is my feed. And then this far one is my return line. And I just flushed it each direction a couple times. And so what I'll do now is I'll put the feed line back on and I'll cut a spot here and uh, connect it to the coolant pump here. I'm gonna have to use the um, 5 8 to 3 quarter adapter um, on this section before I connect it to here. And then my outlet, which I've already connected with the 5 8 adapter, I'll just go, go from here and then I'll feed back into this line, which I'll run into the truck heater core and then come back out this line, run back into the block and uh, start heating the block. <music> Okay, so I've got her all plumbed in now. Just reviewing the plumbing again. Feed line. Feed line runs back. That's my feed line on the top, the darker one. Uh, adapter into the three quarter line. Goes into the coolant pump on the Webasto. Comes out on the inner side and then runs um, through the adapter for the 5 8 line and then into the firewall where the heater core is. Things to note if you decide to do this differently yourself, in the installation manual it recommends that the Webasto be mounted as low as possible uh, because it's self-bleeding for uh, any air bubbles. So you want to try and keep it low. Uh, I decided to go with this location. The other thing is the way that I plumb this is in line with the coolant. So when the Webasto is turned off, I'm assuming that the coolant is going to be able to flow uh, normally through the Webasto and then through the heater core. So if I don't want to run the Webasto, I can still use my heater core um, just running the engine. One other thing to note is in the installation manual, it recommends to um, draw the coolant from one side of the block and then return the coolant to the other side of the block. So that way you have even distribution of um, coolant being heated across the block. So in this case, um, it's not really perfect, but the feed is at the front and then the return is at the bottom of the block 
uh, just like underneath the water pump area. Not really ideal. You could take a feed from the back side on the driver's side where the um, factory coolant temp sensor is and you could tee off of that and then uh, try and figure out some plumbing on this side for the return to tee into this one. This is the way I installed it. We'll see how it functions and I can take some temp readings across the block. Okay, so going over the intake and exhaust plumbing, this is the intake here. I just routed it underneath and put one clamp at the end, um, pointing down into the inner fender where it gets nice cold air. The exhaust came with a clamp um, on the intake, it just sort of uh, twisted on. The uh, exhaust came with a stainless steel clamp, and then I put one clamp here. And then I'll show you down below where I put the second clamp. Now keep in mind this has to not touch anything um, that's flammable as it goes down. So it's above both these hoses here and I'll keep an eye on that just to make sure that nothing touches um, over time. But I'll go down and show you the bottom clamp. So I put the bottom clamp just through the bottom of the frame rail. And then what, what I decided to do was point the uh, end of the exhaust tube right at the oil pan so that way when this thing's running um, you get nice hot air uh, blowing onto the oil pan which will heat up that oil before you start the truck Okay, so I'm just working on the wiring harnesses right now, and I need to cut some of them because they're a little long. Um, right now I'm deciding on where to put the fuel pump uh, because I need to cut that wiring harness. So when routing the fuel pump, um, you want to be no more than 10 feet away from where you're um, sucking the fuel. So I'm going to mount it in a convenient location right about here. So I'm going to drill a hole, mount it, and then I'll be able to... Um, cut short my wiring harness, and then tomorrow I'll uh, drop the fuel tank and run the fuel lines. And here's a look at the fuel pump installed up on the frame. It's got a bolt that goes through the frame, and then the wiring harness. I ended up not shortening I just uh, tucked up the extra wire underneath the cross member and then it runs up into the engine bay. Okay, so I need to drill the hole um, for the standpipe now. And what I think I'm gonna do is put it right around here and then have the standpipe go down to about an inch off the bottom of the tank. This is towards the um, frame rail of the truck, so I'll have it come out there, and then the fuel line can just run and tuck along the frame and meet up with the fuel pump in front of the tank. Okay, so just showing you the um, finalized install on the fuel tank. The standpipe is just here, and then I've uh, routed, or I've already clamped the fuel line, so that way once it's up there, I can just pull the fuel line back and then start zip tying it to the frame.
Okay, so I'm gonna run the engine for a couple minutes to bleed the air out of the system with the rad cap off, and then I'll top up the rad, and after that, we can fire up the Webasto. All right, so I ran the system for a few minutes with the rad cap off and then topped up the coolant, and uh, now I can fire up the Webasto. So the wiring uh, that came with the kit was actually pretty easy to install. <laughs> it's got plug and play. You don't even really need to read the installation instructions to figure out how it works, but you just plug in the harness at the Webasto, and then it, it has like three or four already loomed wires that I just ran across the engine bay. The only place that I cut, cut short the wires it gives you a spot to plug directly into the, like, tie into your battery, and it has a fuse at the end of the hot wire. But what I did was I cut the wire short, and then I installed it on my auxiliary fuse block on the constant side. So if you see there, if you see there on the bottom, I have the constant side, which I've labeled the Webasto, and that's a 20 amp fuse is what it comes with, so I'm gonna stick a 20 amp fuse in there. And instead of being on the battery and cluttering up the battery terminals, I'll have everything in a consolidated, consolidated location on uh, the fuse block setup. So at this point I've completely installed everything except for the control unit in the cab. Um, I think I'm going to try and come up with a bracket for the cab so that way I can easily view it from the driver's seat. But in the meantime I'll just um, stick it onto the dash with some velcro and uh, coil up the wires underneath the dash just to make sure it's neat and out of the way for now. So I'm just running through the... Um like the first initial setup here on the control unit. So I got to set the time and everything um, before I can fire up the heater and then, um, and then I'll be able to run it. So I can hear the pump uh, circulating. We'll see if it uh, fires up here in a minute. Okay, I can start to hear the burner firing up slowly. It's kind of like slowly increasing like a jet engine almost. Okay, it shut off for some reason. So it took a couple tries just to get the fuel up to the uh, Robasto. It started up now though, and it looks like it's burning off just some initial smoke. It's nice and hot down here. So it took me about two or three tries of the uh, no start. I got the F01 error code on the Wabasto control unit before it finally decided to fire up. I just looked underneath the truck at the fuel filter and um, I think it was just trying to get the fuel up to the Webasto before it finally had the fuel. But she's running now so I'll run it for at least 20 minutes. We'll see what the truck temperature is on the gauge cluster. Okay so I've probably been running the heater now for about um, 20 or 30 minutes. What I'm going to do is turn the key on to see what the coolant temperature is here on the dash. Put my hand up here and it's already blowing hot air immediately when I turn the key on. This is awesome. And then down here you can see we are probably a little bit um, lower than what we would normally be at operating temperature. Um, normally for my truck it's between this first tick and second tick is when I'm up on uh, normal operating temperature. This is awesome. Just awesome. Alright so I'm going to come up with a um, solution to mount the Wabasto down here to the left of the brake release controller but for now I just uh, taped it there and I'm gonna get the wiring harness out of the way here in a minute and uh, run it for run it like that for now until I get the a bracket sorted out. All right so I designed this bracket and had it cut using a service called send cut send and this is gonna be for the Wabasto controller so that lines up perfectly there I just got to get some hardware to mount the controller to this bracket and then um, this is going to mount um, through the brake release screw and then I added in a uh, couple holes there so that way I, I can get some bolts and bolt it in <clears throat> right up on the bottom of here. So I just have to drill one additional screw and then, or sorry, one additional hole on this side and then drill this hole out a little bit, get some hardware mounted up there and then that way this will be pointing at the driver uh, when I'm sitting in the driver's seat. All right, so I've got some stainless hardware to mount the Webasto controller, and I designed it so that way the ends of the uh, controller could fit through this hole here first. So 
So I couldn't find um, the right size nuts, so I just got these wing nuts for the top, and they'll go in these two holes on the outside, and then this inside one, um, a part of the uh, brake release cable has a, a divot that indexes in a hole, so that hole is there for that part of the design. Okay, here's a final look at the um, controller bracket. As you can see, it's uh, nice and centered and facing up towards the driver when you're sitting in the driver's seat. And then the wiring, um, I just zip tied up, goes up and meets up with the rest of the wiring harness. There you can see the two bolts um, just going up into the dash. I'll show you from this side real quick, just what it looks like, so you can get a rough idea of how I designed it. Now I'll show you from the driver's seat. Now from the driver's seat, it's just a quick look down. I can see um, before when I had it mounted here, you couldn't even see it. So I really had a tough time um, knowing whether or not it was on, but you just turn it on, it goes red on the outside, and then this little uh, symbol on the bottom, and that's how you know it's on. And the red goes away, even though it stays on. But then when you click the Webasto button once, the red comes back on to show you, to show you that it's on. And then uh, you just click it again and turn it off. So there we go. That would be considered the complete install of the Webasto system.